Let's paint a beautiful spoonbill. This is an image that I licensed from my good friend Mark Brown, who's a photographer and a painter. And so I have this image that I like to paint in different ways. Now today I'm painting a commission for a really nice couple. Actually, this is a gift. And so it's a surprise. And I thought I'd bring you guys along to see how I do this. I've had a lot of, of requests for teaching and it's very, very flattering. And I love to share and teach and help anybody who wants to learn how to paint better. Um, but with my show schedule, it's not really something that I've been able to work in yet. So I thought I would do some videos. So come along with me and we'll paint this today. We'll just get going. Here we go. I'm just putting in a, what I call the underpainting. And I won't get into all the technicals, but I'm just doing some real hot colors that will peek through the, the final um, layers at the top. And these are going to be real just interesting little accents so they're not don't be scared when you see all these let's see one two three four five six seven eight nine one two three four five six seven eight nine eleven okay i'm almost about there and i will never be able to do it exact that's okay that doesn't have to be exact so i like to use the color wheel and i'm doing something called broken color and like i said i don't want to get too technical about what this is because I don't want to distract from the painting but what I'm doing is I'm working with compliments and in order to make the painting kind of vibrate I like to go in and where it's light I paint dark underneath and where it's dark on top I paint light underneath it's pretty simple in that way but then we you got to bring your knowledge of color into it and you'll see what I'm doing as I go so where the beak is yellow, I'm painting it blue or purple, and where the beak is blue, I'm gonna paint it yellow or orange. So these are compliments. So I am using an acrylic gouache, acrylic gouache. You do not need this kind of paint to do this. You can use whatever you've got stashed away. Any acrylic paint that will dry and can be layered on top will work for this. Otherwise, the transparency of the watercolor isn't something you use for broken color. So what I like to do is because this bird is pink, is green and pink rather, I paint green under paintings. So I just added some green to my palette. I'm using a simple throwaway paper plate. And uh, you can use anything you want. You can use a palette or you can use, you know, a formal palette or you can do something like this if you just want something quick. So what I'm doing is I'm coming in here with some Kelly green and some lime green because when I pick up these corals, pinks, raspberries, oranges, I want some of this to peek through. And you'll see what I mean when, you, when I get there. And like I said, this will not be exact. This is just going off um, a piece that this nice couple saw and got sold before they could get it. So... They reach out and they said to Rich, my, my husband Rich, hey, can Kelly paint this for me before a certain date? And he got it to me. So they emailed him and said, what, or I should say he, but it's the husband doing it because it's a surprise. And this video will not air until she gets it. So so I there's a real gorgeous orange patch here in this these birds and so I just paint green underneath because I want it to to really push through from underneath and the broken color is my my kind of my go-to on these pieces now these pieces are done on a 300 pound hot press watercolor paper um anything thinner than that I don't believe will work so these are uh, you know professional grade um, you could do this on canvas. I do all the time, but I personally enjoy painting on paper. 
and I don't always paint on paper. I paint a lot of canvases. And um, the reason I do that is because I can get a really quick painting done on the paper. I don't have to go over it over and over and over again. So that's why I do this. And then I can offer it a little bit better price because it's just done take me as long. So we've got purple up here, so I'll do yellow underpainting. And as you can see, this final piece looks nothing like what I'm doing, does it? Okay, I'll come back when I'm done with this. Well, I've got my underpainting in, and it'll make more sense as I keep going. So now we're going to be doing, well, I shouldn't say the whole underpainting, just under the bird. And again, this is a spoonbill bird. These are found in Texas and Florida and I, probably a lot of places like that. They're very popular in Florida. Um, they're very uh, well-loved subject, and they are gorgeous birds. Now I'm going to start on this uh, water background, and what it is is a fade from warm to cool. So um, I'm thinking that the sun is coming behind this bird is backlit. So back here, it's going to have a more yellow, and then it's going to go slightly more cool, and a little more cool, a little more cool, a little more cool, back to where it's almost like a powdery sky blue, and that fade is going to give a sense of depth. It's going to give a the feeling, a subtle feeling of the sun. So what I've done is I've put a bunch of my golden, and it doesn't have to be golden, it can be any good artist quality, heavy body acrylic paint. I just buy this in the tub by the gallon. Certainly don't have to buy that much, but I go through it. So right now I'm just mixing a little bit of cool lemon yellow in with an aqua, and I'm going to mix up a very warm, pale aqua, almost a, a, almost a mint. So that's what I'm gonna start back up here. And that's a little too warm, so I'm gonna add wa uh, white. Anytime you add white, you cool down your mixture. Remember that, that is very key with color. So I've got a very uh, beat up and abused brush. This looks like it's about an inch and a half. It's um, a bristle brush, and it's probably a Robert Simmons. I usually buy his stuff, but I've had this for years any large brush and you're going to make large strokes like this. This is how you get that spontaneous look. You just don't overwork it. And you don't try to be perfect. That's the problem with um, a lot of paintings is they've been overworked and um, over fussed with and then they lose that spontaneity. And that's my one of my signature that I'm known for is doing like a single brush stroke. Sorry, I'm mixing while I'm trying to talk. So is doing like a, um, a spontaneous looking, I'm cooling this down because I'm trying to do this for commission and I really do want to get the colors right. Normally I would just go with whatever I laid down there and I would just go, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna fuss with it a second here. So I'm cooling my mixture down. You see how I'm rolling my brush on the side to get that yellow off and then I'll just scrape. You see how you know, not, not neat I'm being. So my brush is very loaded, very loaded. So I don't have to press hard. So I'm just gonna pull that across like that and come in there and some white, if some white of the paper shows through, it's okay as long as it's reading when we're done. And so these little nuances are make for some really charming little um, subtleties on the finished painting so we don't we don't fuss with it too much we'd like spontaneity and that's what this piece will have so I just came in with a little smaller brush just to get around some of the anatomy of the bird so I'm going to keep working on this part of the background um, trying to fade the light from warm to cool as I said and I'm all I'm doing is just, I'm taking a little bit of this cyan blue each time with the corner of my brush and I'm just mixing it into my existing mixture and I'm just, I'm cooling it down and it will naturally darken too on each go round, which is good because the further away from the sun, remember we said the sun was behind him. So as the depth of field comes forward to you, the person in the front of him, it will get darker and cooler and that is a very classical um, way to what is called express light 
in a painting. Okay, so when I get the rest of this field covered in, I'll be right back. Okay, so we've got the rest, some of the gradations in the water. Now this bird was in a um, shallow, uh, calm um, estuary, and I believe it was in Mayaka State Park in Sarasota. Um, and what I'm gonna do is create um, some ripples. So as you saw earlier, I put in an underpainting of uh, warm, hot colors in a striated stripe pattern. It's just something I abst abstracted what I felt like the water looked like. It's not, it was not literally like that. Um, so now I've got a new mixture. I cleaned my uh, palette here and I've got a, a really um, a well used 20 plus year old um, filbert that I have splayed as you can tell from being very mean to it. And um, it holds a lot of paint and is why I like it. And so anyway, I'm gonna start with um, a, a nice um, mixture of a little bit of a, a warm blue, it's a cyan or cerulean and then um, the aqua to start on the top striation. And I just want to cool it down a little bit from what it's going to be next to in the background. So there's a, a teeny bit of play there. Warming against cool and a dark against light and so forth is, is a, um, a philosophy of painting. So that's what I'm doing. So I'm coming in over this yellow stripe. Or it's very subtle. The changes are going to be real subtle so they don't look like, quote, stripes. Uh, but they just kind of have a... I mean, almost an atmospheric quality to them. So I'm just, each time I'm mixing, I'm just adding a teeny bit more of cerulean and I'm gonna work my gradations and this painting is gonna paint itself. After I've got my, my uh, all of my years of study of painting and whatnot and uh, practice, which is really the most important thing, these paintings paint themselves. Once you start with a good image and you have a, a, a idea where you're going, so, you've got your, your working structure of how you're gonna get this thing done. So each time I add a little bit more paint, a little, cool it down a little and darken it up a little bit. I don't want these stripes to jump off the, the paper and I don't want them to be lost either. So now it's time to go to my even uh, cooler blue, which is the ultramarine. So that's gonna change it up a little bit. And so I'm just gonna keep working down. And this is turning out pretty good. Um, so. I hope you can pick this up on the video, but the, the teeny bit of the hot colors are just barely coming through. And that's all we want, because we don't want to scream at you, even though we do love bright colors. So we'll come in with a little bit more here. And now, um, as you develop in painting, you're gonna learn that you don't have to do things exactly how somebody else does. It's just like a recipe. You just get in there and you make it your own, which is what I've done with my style. And I certainly am not painting anything like the uh, teachers that I had. Um, okay, so then I'm going to go in and keep going down here and all the way till the end. And then I'll be right back. Now, this is the part where I'm going to start putting on the texture, is what I call it, and I'm going to use a palette knife. I love a palette knife. It keeps the um, color pure, and since I'm a colorist, um, that is a big priority for me. And um, what I mean by pure is that it doesn't um, blend with the layers underneath as much, unless you want it to, as a brush would. Now, the other nice thing about palette knife is that, like I said, you get a 
a just glorious texture when you're done. Um, if you know you're, if you've set it up to do that. like Liquitex and Golden make something called mediums. This is a pouring medium. Um, you can mix it with your paint to create this. This is just a condiment uh, bottle that I got on Amazon. And all you do is you pour this into here and then you pour, excuse me, you squeeze the um, acrylic. It can be heavy body. It can be um, flow or fluid, whatever the, their different um viscosities are that the different companies offer. Um, and this, I'm just shaking this. And then you take us a, a skewer and you just until you get it pretty, pretty well 
pretty well a mix. Now, then I can pour. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with something called crazing, which is what paint will do if you pour a paint right out of the jar like this without a medium. Not all paints will do that, but I don't take a risk with it. I also use this to sign my name. I'm just going to find his adorable expression with the eye uh, kind of looking back at us like he's he sees us. Okay, so this is so simple but so important to the painting. And I just give him a little eye, a little expression. Boom. Don't put too much. It'll spread a teeny bit after you put it on there. Now I'm going to sign him the way I did this because this is a commission. So I have my mixed, pre-mixed of white. And then I just always test on a plate that it's coming out okay because I don't want to mess it up on the signature. All right, so we'll get this ready to sign. That works good. I typically don't fool with it, but this looks weird, so I'll just give him a swipe here. That's that's it. I'm not gonna fiddle with things if I if I don't have to because it'll look like it. Okay, now let me show you the final piece. So here's our finished suit spindle. He's still drying. He's just just charming. I love these birds. They're great subjects. Birds, animals are great subjects. You can see when I come in. Up close, the texture, the broken color, as I mentioned at the very beginning a couple times. If you want some more information, kellytrack.com, linked below. I do sell these and they frame up beautifully. And um, I typically have um, a dozen or so available. Um, we're entering show season, so they will sell quick at the shows. They're an attractive piece for an attractive price I have on custom framed in this gorgeous white lacquered frame under plexi. You do need to frame your papered works under glass or plexi. You guys, thank you for being here and I appreciate it. Please leave a question or comment. I really, really do appreciate your interest and all the support of all my lovely collectors and friends out there. We really bless you guys. Have a good one guys. Thanks. Bye-bye.